Launch countdown. T minus five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have liftoff. <laughs> It was 1962. I was a young boy watching John Glenn soar into the sky. It was at that moment my dreams first took flight. Even at an early age, I learned the power of exaggeration. John Glenn, Kevin Glenn. Well, if my impressionable friends drew the wrong conclusion, who was I to correct them? Friends and dreamers of all ages, do you recall that moment when your dreams first took flight, when fantasy was your reality, I do. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to soar into outer space. I still do. But so far, I haven't come close. Well, not exactly. As a young adult, I was given a chance not to soar into space, but to plummet down from it. I figured what goes up must come down. So when I got asked if I wanted to go skydiving, I figured half a flight, better than none. So guess what I said? Why not? I was so excited when I went to my father and said, Dad, I'm going skydiving. He responded just as enthusiastically with a lengthy list of why nots. But I was undeterred. The big day arrived. After four hours of basic training, I got the question I wasn't expecting. You want to be the first out of the plane? I thought about it for a second, and guess what I said? That's right, why not? So then we suit up and head to the plane. Since I was going to be the first one out of the plane, I was the last one in, seated on the floor between the pilot and the door. Many other skydivers sat right where I was, some had left inscriptions on the dash. The one I will always remember is, does your mother know where you are? We take off and bank over. I look out, wow! Pilot looks at me, you ever been in a plane before? No, this is cool. We continue to climb until we reach 2,000 foot elevation and the pilot tells the jump master, we've arrived. There's a click and a mighty whoosh. The side door swings up and a burst of cold air enters the cabin, <sighs> taking your very breath away and almost your lunch. I was shaking like a leaf. M -m my heart was beating out of my chest. You would have thought I was about to give my icebreaker speech. The jump master looks at me. Kevin, are you ready? Take your position. I swing my legs outside the plane and look down. Holy moly, the earth is so far away. Suddenly, I had my answer to that question. Why not? I slowly climb outside the plane, holding onto the strut, looking at the jump master for the final all clear. He gives me the signal and I jump. And for a few glorious seconds in my life, I realized my childhood dream. I felt like an astronaut. I was, for a moment, living a glimmer of my dream. In 1961, President Kennedy dared to dream when he declared, this nation should commit itself to landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Returning safely to the earth was my primary inspiration at this moment. I wouldn't be plummeting to her at such a rapid pace if it hadn't been for John F. Kennedy. Nor would Neil Armstrong have ever uttered those immortal words from the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So what does Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, John Glenn orbiting the earth, and Kevin Glenn plummeting to earth all have in common? They all began with a dream. Not just any dream, but a bold, daring, and previously unimaginable dream. Have you ever had a dream so bold, so daring, and for most people, it was unimaginable. Have you ever failed to take action because others could not envision what you had so clearly dreamed? Have you ever been swayed by fear or doubt when you have dared to ask why not? 
as you may safely assume, my parachute deployed and I returned safely to the earth. John F. Kennedy's most famous phrase begins, ask not, I contend all of your hopes, your desires, and your dreams begin the moment you ask, why not? <laughs>